Today, I'll be presenting on the TV series Hannibal, created by Brian Fuller. Through an analysis of the show's dialogue and visuals, I will argue that Hannibal illustrates the impossibility of a concept of evil. The show exposes the shortcomings of conventional definitions of evil and critiques inconsistencies in moral religious systems and theodicies. It thereby implies that good and evil do not exist, while simultaneously highlighting the dangers which belief in an amoral world poses. The two main characters in the show are Hannibal Lecter and Will Graham. Will Graham is a special agent for the FBI. He has an empathy disorder, which allows him to empathize so completely with other people that he can think like them, and to some extent take on their personalities. He uses this empathy to solve crimes by empathizing with killers. Hannibal is a serial killer and cannibal. He is also Will's psychiatrist. He commits many of the crimes which Will investigates, and initially, Will is unaware of Hannibal's crimes. Will slowly discovers the truth about Hannibal over the course of the show. Other key characters include Bedelia du Maurier, Hannibal's psychiatrist, and Abigail Hobbs, who is the daughter of a serial killer that Will Graham investigates. Over the course of three seasons, Hannibal taunts the FBI by constructing bizarrely artistic crime scenes and hosting elaborate dinners where he feeds Will and other FBI officials dishes which, unbeknownst to them, contain the remains of the very murder victims they're investigating. Throughout the show, Hannibal attempts to persuade Will to adopt his lifestyle and worldviews. Will is morally conflicted. Initially, he tries to insist that Hannibal is evil, but slowly he becomes more and more persuaded by Hannibal's arguments. Although their relationship is fraught, Hannibal and Will eventually develop a close bond, each feeling that the other is the only person in the world who can truly understand him. The series' critique of the concept of evil hinges on the question of whether or not Hannibal can be called evil by conventional standards. Although the knee-jerk response to this question is that, yes, of course, a cannibalistic murderer is evil. Hannibal is continually able to evade that categorization when it's applied to him by others in the show. Multiple characters throughout the series push back on conventional notions of evil, illustrating that it's not as easy to define as we might assume. According to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, a key component of evil is free will. In order to be evil, a person must voluntarily choose to cause suffering. The show argues against the existence of free will, thereby undermining the notion that Hannibal can be evil. Bedelia tells Will that she does not blame Hannibal for his crimes because he is only doing what evolution has equipped him to do. She takes the stance that biological determinism, not free will, governs our actions and that Hannibal is merely one more form of naturally occurring predator, capable of doing only what his genetics dictate. She also invokes moral relativism, arguing that murder and cannibalism are morally acceptable to murderers and cannibals. Therefore, murderers and cannibals cannot be said to choose to do evil. Will, meanwhile, believes that the nature of the universe precludes the possibility of free will. He subscribes to the theory that multiple universes exist, and that every possible sequence of events that can occur does occur in some alternate timeline. For this reason, any choice we make is merely one of many outcomes. Other versions of us make different choices in alternate universes, and for this reason, choice itself is an illusion. This means that it's impossible to ever do the wrong thing. Evil can also be defined as doing harm. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy states that nearly all theorists concur that an evil act must be one which causes harm. However, when Will accuses Hannibal of doing just that, Hannibal responds that storms and other natural disasters also cause harm, yet they are not evil. It might be argued that Hannibal is different from a storm in that he has agency, but, as discussed previously, the show has already cast doubt on the question of whether or not we have free will. In light of this, Hannibal's argument that he is like a storm, destructive but not evil, is much more convincing. In this way, 
Hannibal is able to dodge the claim that evil can be defined as harm. In this scene, Will is not able to come up with any response to counter Hannibal's argument. Instead, he silently takes a bite of food, food which he knows contains human flesh, and for a brief moment, his face morphs to become Hannibal's. This seems to suggest that Will concedes the point, and that Hannibal has won the argument. Hannibal's ability to separate his own actions from various possible definitions of evil comprise the heart of the series' critique of evil as a concept. Any definition of evil which would exclude Hannibal is inherently an incomplete or incorrect definition of evil because his actions are so clearly reprehensible. Yet, as we see again and again throughout the show, most conventional definitions of evil fail to neatly apply to Hannibal. Thus, we are forced to question the very existence of evil as a concept. There is yet another dimension to Hannibal's assertions about evil in this scene. He describes the meal that he and Will eat as an act of God, just like storms and other natural disasters. This introduces religion into the show's debate about evil. Many of Hannibal's arguments about evil draw on theodicy. Theodicy is an argument which explains why God allows evil to exist in the world. It's an answer to the question of how an omnipotent and benevolent God could permit seemingly unjustifiable human suffering. As Peter Thusen writes in his book, Tornado God, natural disasters are often sites for questions of theodicy. Natural disasters can kill innocent people, including children. They are also random and unpredictable. They therefore present a challenge to the idea that God is both all-powerful and fundamentally good. Thusen writes that there are several theodicies which arise in response to the issue of storms. The first is that storms may be interpreted as a punishment for a wrongdoing. They are therefore justified because they are an expression of God's wrath against sinners. The second is that God cannot be judged by human standards of morality. God is above human concepts of good and evil, and therefore, we cannot attempt to parse God's actions as moral or immoral. The third is that the will of an omnipotent being will always remain mysterious to mortals, and there can be no answer to the mystery. In the series, Hannibal borrows these arguments to defend his own actions. He twists the Odyssey in order to simultaneously justify himself and mock the idea of a benevolent God. Hannibal argues that he is a creation of God like any other. In this way, he himself is an act of God. Like the tornado, Hannibal therefore becomes a site for questions of the Odyssey. He uses this to his advantage, arguing that he can be no more evil than the creator who allows him to persist on earth. He compares his murders to acts of God such as storms, church collapses, and typhoid. In doing so, Hannibal claims the moral protection of theodicy for himself. Theodicy holds that God is not evil despite permitting and enacting evil in the world. The only way this is possible is if evil is redefined in some way. The examples we see in Thusen's book largely suggest that what appears to us to be evil is actually either a punishment for sin or part of a larger mystery that is yet to be revealed to us. By that same logic, Hannibal, as a creation of God, cannot truly be called evil either. This returns to the series' central thesis on the impossibility of defining evil. If evil is justified by theodicy, and if it serves God's purpose, then that only supports the idea that true evil does not exist. However, there is another dimension to Hannibal's argument. Hannibal is more or less happy to use the language of theodicy to shield himself from moral criticism, but at the same time, he critiques the idea that God is fundamentally good. Hannibal's argument hinges on the fact that his own actions mirror God's. Hannibal tells Will that God must enjoy killing because he does it all the time. In essence, he suggests that whatever moral system or lack thereof God is following it must be the same system which he, Hannibal, subscribes to. In fact, Hannibal directly frames his murders as a microcosm of God's plan. He tells Will that, although he doesn't pray, he feels awe when he considers how his own modest actions pale in comparison to God's. Hannibal therefore critiques religious moral systems by applying God's guidelines for behavior to himself. 
When exemplified by a human being, God's actions appear amoral and inconsistent at best, evil at worst. Hannibal suggests that God cannot be essentially good because Hannibal's actions mirror God's and his actions are not morally good. By demonstrating this point, Hannibal aims to prove that human morality cannot be applied to God at all and that God is fundamentally amoral. In his article, A Sadistic Companionship, Hannibal Lecter and God, Joshua Walton writes specifically about the representation of Hannibal as God. Walton states that the series simultaneously portrays Hannibal as God and the devil. This illustrates how thin the division between good and evil really is, and suggests that God and the devil may have more in common than we think. Walton writes that Hannibal often behaves like the Old Testament God, killing people who have offended or been disrespectful to him. Hannibal is also likened to God visually, including through a mock crucifixion. At the same time, Hannibal takes on the role of Lucifer when he influences and persuades others to sin. There are also visual allusions to the devil, including one instance in which Satan's face is superimposed onto Hannibal's. Difficulty in distinguishing Hannibal from God or devil, in fact, difficulty in distinguishing God from the devil at all, derives home the point that God isn't necessarily good. However, at the same time, it also leaves room for ambiguity in Hannibal's arguments, because if Hannibal really is the devil, then his job is to discredit God, and although he does it very well, that doesn't necessarily mean that he is right. The series seems to argue unequivocally that the universe is amoral and that evil does not exist. However, there's a layer of ambivalence which is apparent from the design of the show itself. Marshall McLuhan argues that the medium through which we consume media can be more important than the information the media conveys. This raises the question of why Brian Fuller chose to make Hannibal a TV series and what message that medium imparts on the viewer. To answer this question, it's important to note that Hannibal first aired during the time period when binge watching was becoming popular. The show itself is therefore just as bingeable as the feasts Hannibal prepares. I believe that Brian Fuller chose television as his medium in order to take advantage of our modern media consumption practices to add a layer of nuance to the show's moral arguments. Although much of the show is spent espousing an amoral worldview, the medium puts the dangers of amorality on display. Fuller illustrates how easy it is for the audience to become utterly amoral consumers of the perverse and the grotesque by turning them into exactly that. The promotional materials for the show reinforce this idea. Some posters invite the viewer to join the characters with slogans like embrace the madness, while others, such as the one on the right, seem to offer the viewer a seat at Hannibal's dining table. The show also allows us to see blood and gore from Hannibal's perspective. For example, the four murder victims shown here are artistically rendered in a way that is visually appealing to the audience. Hannibal's meals are equally appealing. It's not uncommon to see fans joking on online forums that even though they know what's in the food, they would still be tempted to eat it. Hannibal's cooking scenes are often accompanied by classical music, which imparts a sense of sophistication and nobility onto what would otherwise be a repugnant and barbaric act. The general aesthetic of the show is also striking, playing with light and dark, slow motion close-ups, and intensely saturated colors to create a rich and vibrant visual experience that draws the viewer in. The audience is silently persuaded to see violence from Hannibal's point of view. While Hannibal works to corrupt Will Graham, the camera does the same with the viewer. Therefore, although the show argues that evil is impossible to conceptualize or define, it also defends the importance of moral systems as pro-social constructs, which protect us from the cruelty and chaos of a world in which aesthetics and hedonism take precedence over morality. And here are my sources.